I want to preface this by saying I actually love Porsches, but what I consider a Porsche is a 911. Now I know people keep changing the name of the 911 and they call them 995s and 997s and everything else. And to be officially a Porsche guy, you need to have the right vernacular to describe the car that you're talking about. I call them 911s, it doesn't matter what year it is, especially 911s built 84 and newer since they started calling them Carreras. I think they're the coolest car in the whole wide world. I personally used to own a 995 as they called it, wide body. It was one of the most fun and exciting cars I ever owned. I had it for two years. I sold it for $6,000 more than I bought it for. To me, that body style is the quintessential Porsche and everything else is not a Porsche. Boxsters, I get it, they're popular. I'm just not into them. I don't think they're that nice of a car. I think there's a million other alternatives that are not only nicer, but far nicer than the Boxster. Plus, quality on a Boxster out of warranty is not good, not good at all. And then that brings us to the Cayenne. Also, there's the Panamera, which has recently come out. Again, not a big fan, but I'm actually a bigger fan of the Panamera than I am of the Cayenne. Cayenne is uh, refreshed for 2008. It's actually considered a new body style, but pretty much the same body style with a different look, almost a revised uh, version of its former self. Uh, it shares its uh, uh, underpinnings with the uh, Volkswagen Touareg, as you probably know. In fact, it is a Volkswagen Touareg for all essential purposes. It does have a uh, Porsche 385 horsepower, 32 valve, four overhead camshaft engine, which is distinctive to this car. And it is very fast. I mean, it's a powerful, powerful car, 369 foot pounds of torque. And it does have a really neat uh, uh, suspension system, especially when you get the upgraded suspension system. How it works is the uh, roll bars actually have their own swiveling components on either side, both front and back. And so the, as the car wants to lean, it compensates for that and the, uh, keeps the car flat. So if you want to uh, drive very aggressively, uh, the newer version of the Cayenne, this being the Cayenne S, which means it comes with a V8 engine, is actually a really nice handling vehicle. But again, that being said, it's still one of my least favorite sport utilities for a variety of reasons. One, I sell cars for a living. And so as a result, when you sell cars for a living, you're really uh, conscientious about cars that bring you a lot of drama in your life. You'll never have any drama if you deal in Honda Civics. I may not be the biggest fan of Honda Civics. Actually, I am a big fan of Honda Civics, but they're just a normal car, but they don't give me any grief in my life. You'll never sell one. doesn't matter if it's got 500,000 miles. You'll never sell one that the phone's gonna be blowing up on you the next day with a customer who says, man, I should have never bought that car. You guys are a bunch of jerks. But there's a few cars that if you do sell them, you really are playing with fire. And this is definitely one of them. In our experience, it's been one of the most troublesome cars to deal with especially out of warranty. Cayennes and their Volkswagen Touareg counterparts are kind of the who's who of our unhappiest customers in my 10 year experience here at Infinity of Kirkland. Now, the car itself starts off at about $57,000. That's the original MSRP uh, tag on this one, minus options. And when you add those options, it becomes a completely different price point. It's $87,000 plus dollars for this car as it is equipped based on the original Monroney sticker that we have here. Now this car was just traded in here, and it's a nice car, it's a pretty color, but it has a lot of extras which you wouldn't think are necessarily extra on today's modern high performance vehicle. Xenon lights, they cost extra. Wheels, they cost extra. Let's take a look inside. Now this one has full leather. So full leather means, well it already has leather on the seats, you already know that. But with Porsches, they put full leather right up here on the doors, and they put full leather up here on the dash. Yeah, I mean, that's cool, but it's $3,000 plus, and so it just seems like an awful lot of money. You're gonna have black something here anyway. In fact, it's gonna look a lot like, you know, this black finish here. But by adding this leather for $3,000, it just seems crazy. These gauges, they're normally a black finish, like most gauges in the world. These are white, okay, whatever but it's $1,200. I mean, it just seems almost asinine that you'd spend that kind of money on something so silly. Now, most of these cars aren't custom ordered. This is just the way they show up at the dealership. And so you're kind of obligated, if you want one, to kind of get what they have at the dealership. $1,200 for gauges that are this color as opposed to that, this seems absolutely crazy. Now, stuff like the moonroof, 
bow stereo and what have you, comfort seats with the multifunction uh, capacity. Well, that comes as one options package. And that options package is over $8,000. And so again, little things that kind of you take for granted, like isn't that standard? No, not standard, far from standard. In fact, they're extremely expensive. Floor mats, well, how much are floor mats? Even on our brand, Infinity, and we know our floor mats are expensive. They're $95 on some cars. They're $135 on other cars. Yes, you can get them at Costco for 30 bucks. They cost more at Infinity of Kirkland. But at Porsche, the same floor mats, $510. $510 for floor mats? You gotta be kidding me. And then in the back, rear view camera, parking sensors, they're pretty much standard in the modern world. You're not gonna get a car for $57,000 that doesn't have a rear view camera and parking sensors. Oh yes you are, it's called the Cayenne S. And if you wanna get those parking sensors and rear view camera, it's over $2,500. It's crazy, it's just so much money for something that's so simple. And what happens is, is that with Porsche people, it's like you're not allowed to say anything negative about the car. Hey, it's a Porsche, you don't get it. This is not a Porsche, it's a Volkswagen Touareg. And rear view cameras on a Volkswagen Touareg don't cost no $2,500. As soon as you put the Porsche uh, uh, on it, it's got this allure like, you know, you're at the uh, psychiatrist's office and he's got the watch in front of you and you're suddenly uh, slipping under the, uh, the weight of his spell. And that's how it is on these cars, is that people just kind of lay down for obnoxiously expensive add-ons for a car that, to my thinking, is one of the most obnoxiously expensive vehicles to upkeep out of warranty that there is in the sports utility segment. Now, in the back, this, again, makes you wonder, why would you even buy this car as a sports utility? Why not just get an all-wheel drive vehicle? If you look, and you see, well, this is all opened up, so there's plenty of space back here. However, the slope of this trunk lid is such that the only real room is this five or six inches behind the headrest going straight down. And then immediately it cuts way, way, way down. So although it looks spacious with the lid up, it's actually not spacious at all. If you put a stroller back here, I mean, you're done. You're completely done. There's no grocery shopping. There's no nothing. And so to say, I'm buying this vehicle because I have a family and I need space, there's no space in this for somebody who has a family. Like every single other uh, very, uh, kind of sport utility that there is, is much more practical than this. Again, it's got a big motor, but the rest of it, it's just not practical. And $87,000, you've got to be kidding me. It's much too expensive for what you get. Let's take a look inside. One of my favorite features on this car is these little uh, crests that are integrated into the headrest. And so these are about a 250, I think they're $270 option. And so all they are is tone on tone, the Porsche crest. Why I would spend extra for that, I couldn't possibly justify the reason. First, it's behind you, so you can't even see it. The only thing that you could possibly justify is if somebody's already in your car and you think they might forget somehow that they're in a Porsche and you want to point to this and remind them. Why you would spend extra for something like that is absolutely silly, but it's something that only a Porsche owner would understand. Again. 911s, I get it. They're eccentric. All this stuff costs extra. See how this stuff is painted the same color as the exterior? Maybe you wouldn't even notice. But you're going to notice when it costs $3,000 to have this painted to match stuff in the center of the, uh, of the control unit here. I mean, come on. Why could this possibly be that kind of expense? Because Porsche people are Porsche people. They like things to be obnoxiously eccentric. They think it's fun to justify, oh, look at me, I just spent $3,000 on a piece of plastic. No other car brand in the world is this this way. With Infinity, we know. I mean, there's one package, there's another package. People are really sensitive. They want to make sure that their value goes as far as they expect it to go. The difference between an FX35 and an FX45, it can be as much as $6,000. And although you get a big horsepower gain, FX45 probably being the primary pound-for-pound uh, pound competitor with this. I know all the magazine reviews always feature on like the ML63 uh, Mercedes-Benz or an X5M or something like that. But really, uh, 
the FX45, the prior generation of the current body style FX, is actually performance wise extremely comparable to this and then interior wise also extremely comparable. Where they're not uh, comparable is that the FX is built to last till just about the end of forever and being a Japanese vehicle it does it in an extremely trouble free way. The new generation of that is the FX50. The FX50 even fully 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 loaded is like $20,000 less than this and it's not even an interesting comparable. The FX50 is dynamically in every single conceivable way superior to this and then again fabulous build quality compared to this. I mean it's not like the FX50 is the best built car that's ever been by a stretch. However compared to the Cayenne S it's a whole different category above anything that's coming out of Stuttgart. This car is a is a nice car. It's got 1980 style controls, which are tedious at best. The interior, I mean, it's not spacious in the back seat. It's not spacious in the front seat, and there's not reasonable accommodations for a sport utility behind the rear seat. It's got this big giant dashboard here, which takes up a lot of the acreage that you have inside the cabin. This center stack is just too big. It comes out too far. You've got these things. I don't even know what these are for. They're, they're silly at best, but it's fast and it says Porsche. And if you want something that's fast and says Porsche, well then apparently you want a Cayenne S or even better still a Cayenne Turbo and now you're talking about monster monster horsepower. Cayenne Turbo is definitely the fastest sport utility that there is on the road but again they're just so expensive to deal with. If you're going to go lease a new one I get it you're not going to have to worry about expense going down the road but again the resale value on these is so poor compared to everything else and the reason is everybody knows outside of warranty they're just very very expensive to deal with if you have any questions if you feel that anything i said was inappropriate in representing this vehicle maybe you're a big fan and you've had nothing but uh, tons of smiles and happy miles in your cayenne s please don't hesitate to give me a call with any uh, questions or comments or concerns that you might have. My name's Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland. You can reach me at 425-821-1600 or just drop me an email at joet at infinityofkirkland.com.